What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. Today is the start of a new series on radio direction finding, which as the name suggests, is a way to determine the location of radio signals. We'll cover a number of tools to track down signals in this series, everything from the more traditional methods with directional antennas and the latest technology with tools like the Kraken SDR. We'll kick off the series with the Kraken SDR and use it to track a signal for demonstration in today's video. And I hope that you'll join me as we go on the hunt. One mile west. Now before we start tracking the signal down, let's quickly go over the hardware components for this setup. We'll go more in depth in later videos, but I just want to quickly show what makes up the setup. So first we have the Kraken SDR, which is a multi-channel software-defined radio designed specifically for direction finding. The hardware consists of a board with five synchronized RTL SDRs to provide accurate direction finding capabilities. And you'll see we have five SMA jacks for each of the RTL SDRs. Then we have an array of five magnetic antennas that need to be precisely placed on the roof of a vehicle. And their GitHub has a template you can print out or 3D print to make placement easy. Then we have a Raspberry Pi 5 running an operating system image that they offer. Then finally, we need a phone running the Kraken SDR app, which will connect to the Raspberry Pi to get the signal data from the Kraken SDR, as well as provide the necessary GPS and compass information. You can see an overview of the setup and how it all fits together in the documentation on their GitHub page. Now let's go over the target signal we're going to track down. For today's demonstration video, we're going to start off with an easy known target to test with and show how everything works. Then later on in the series, we'll start going after harder to track down targets. We'll see how trackable mesh-tastic radio signals are, and we'll see what works and what doesn't work in terms of making yourself harder to track down. So for today's video, like I mentioned, we'll be going after an easy target to start off with. And an easy target is one with a strong signal that is constantly transmitting. Many airports will either have what's called an AWOS, which you'll see at smaller airports, or an ATIS, which you'll see at the larger commercial airports with airliners. And these systems provide airport and weather information for pilots to tune into. Maximum information, Oscar time, 2253 observation, wind 0606, visibility 10, few clouds at 5000, temperature 32, 2.20. Altimeter is 2973. Braving aircraft expect the visual approach. Landing and departing runways 5 left and 5 right. Arrivals expect runway 5 left. Notums, taxiway Romeo 1 is closed. Read back all runway hold short instructions on assigned altitudes. Advise us contact you have information, Oscar. And since these systems are constantly transmitting from a known location, they'll be a great first target to test things out and demonstrate. So we'll be tracking down the ATIS signal for Knoxville's commercial airport, which is on 128.35. So we'll put that into the Kraken SDR configuration and update the changes. Then we'll go to the DOA estimation screen so we can see the compass view. Now this isn't required, but it'll just be cool to see for the demo. We actually don't need the laptop at all for this and can control everything from the phone, but I just wanted to show both of them in action for the demo. So now once we hit the road and start moving, it'll start tracking down the location and give us a general area of where it thinks the signal is coming from. The app also has a navigation option that'll give you GPS directions toward the signal so you can keep your eyes on the road and to send you in directions that'll help pinpoint the location. With the Android app on the right side of the screen here, we can see we have a red line which shows the vehicle's direction of travel. The light blue line is an average bearing to the signal. The dark blue line points towards the estimated grid location, and the black lobes will match what we see on the compass view on the server to the left of the Android screen. Ideally, we want to see a thin lobe pointed towards the signal. Anytime we see a wide lobe like this or multiple lobes means we're getting poor readings, which is often due to multipath of signals reflecting off buildings and other objects. Then we have the map itself, which is a heat map. So the areas with the hotter colors like red will be where the signal is the strongest and the likely location of the signal. The cooler colors like blue and green will be areas with less signal. 
the colors will adjust and provide more accuracy as more data is collected. And there we go, after a few minutes, it's giving us a green circle, which is a more confident estimated location of the signal. This will move around a bit as it becomes more accurate as we get closer to the signal and get more data. After getting a bit closer to the signal and getting data from more angles, we can see that the red area on the heat map is getting more focused on a location as it's becoming more confident where the signal's coming from. And then finally, as I pass the location where the center of the green circle is, we can see the red area of the heat map get even more focused as we've now collected data from 360 degrees around the location. I didn't get it on camera too well, but I could see four towers to the left of me, so I turned around and headed in the other direction to get a better view on camera. And as we can see here, there we have four antenna towers, which one is definitely transmitting our target signal. And we can confirm the location on the map here where we have this taxiway that if we follow the direction it's pointing and pass the other runway, the signal should be coming from the left of that. Then if we pull up satellite imagery following that same taxiway beyond the other runway and zoom in the area to the left a bit, we can see our antenna and the confirmed location of where the signal was coming from. That'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. We're just getting started in this direction finding series, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you can follow along for the rest of this series. Thank you all and have a good one.